Hey there. So you have watched all the training videos and taken the quizzes and now you're saying to yourself, what do I do now? Good question, my friends. In previous modules, we learned about records management policy 117. We learned about email best practices, how to name documents, understand how to read a records retention schedule, structured shared drives and other content systems, and how to send and recall records to manage storage. But watching training modules is not the same as implementing a records management system. Folks just don't know where to start. In this module, you will discover the three steps to operationalize what you have learned in the other videos. Step one, getting approval. Step two, contacting the records management office. And step three, setting up a records management project. Step one, first, talk to your boss about improving your unit's record management system. Any good record management system should start with approval and input from your boss. Can I just clean up my little area? I don't think my boss has time to worry about records management. Of course you can start with better management of the university records you create. But remember, governance over information reduces risk for the entire unit, and University Policy 117 states that operational responsibility for records management lay with the head of the unit. Every boss wants an efficient and secure system that everyone understands. Step 2. Contact the Records Management Office to book a meeting. At the meeting, we will talk about your current system and discuss ways we can help fill any gaps that your system may have. The Records Management Office is always here to provide advice on best practices, but we can also do more. Step 3. Consider doing a records management project. Records management project? What's that? A records management project typically begins with an assessment that identifies gaps in current documentation and highlights areas of greatest risk. For example, a content system like a shared drive might be a source of risk because there could be student or human resource information contained there and we don't know how access is controlled. In addition, if we have no documented schedule for records removal, potentially risky information piles up year after year. Friends, the risk increases. <laughs> To reduce risk, we do the following. First, we identify access rights and restrictions, followed by mapping the folders to a retention schedule. The Records Management Office tailors the system to the unique needs of the unit. Each folder is mapped to a time limit for retention. This might be long-term or it may be shorter term. This way, information that does not need to be retained is removed on a predictable schedule. This process then creates a folder structure based on a durable system that is tied then to the retention schedule. The team finally implements a responsibility matrix tied to the structure and a naming standard for documents. At the end of the project, we have a streamlined drive and a comprehensive set of information governance protocols. People, what we have here is a managed system. Um, but who actually does the work setting all this up? None of us have the time. Now, that's a good question. This work does not happen magically, my friends. A unit can choose to do most of the work under the guidance of the RMO, or we can help you design a project, providing professional development or a co-op student work experience from the School of Library and Archival Studies. Some of these options are free of charge to the units, others are not. If there's a lot of work to do, this typically requires a project-based paid position. Won't this be disruptive to our daily work? No. Records management projects are designed to minimize staff disruptions, but we do need staff feedback. Any work of this nature is impossible without talking to and getting buy-in from staff. All the changes suggested are completed on paper first in consultation with the unit. Only after the unit is happy with the changes are they implemented. They can be implemented by responsible staff or by project-based personnel. A successful Yay. project requires commitment from management and staff. Okay. Good to know. What if we don't want a project? How do we start small? Ask yourself this. What practice represents the highest risk? For many units, due to the sheer volume, it will be their email practices, making an error in the email address when sending or receiving sensitive personal information. <sighs> Friends, change that practice. It's risky for the unit <laughs> and the university. Use Workspace or any of UBC's approved web-based platforms to store the attachment and place a link in the email. This is an example of a small change that can make a big impact. What are other ways we can start small? Always think about risk. Know who has access to your drives and content systems. Decide, and importantly, document how new folders are created. 
Unmanaged folder creation with unique permission causes problems. But don't go it alone. Talk to others in your unit and go to the records management website and review our guidelines. Contact us. We can help. Now, let's see what you have learned.